Let me show you something. and say, I'm Air Jordan. <laughs> no, not really. I mean, pardon me, I got a cold, so it's, it sounds a little different. No, I think uh, I have good friends and good relatives that really keep my head, you know, really leveled and, uh, you know, not up in the air, as you want to say. Yeah. Have you ever looked at a tape like that and said, how did I do that? All the time. All really? the time. I mean, you, you know, I think the art of creativity is that you're always going to surprise yourself. You never know what's going to happen. It's just going to happen. And my game has a lot of creativity in it. You know, when I go out to play, I go out to play hard. What yeah. happens, happens. You know, people see it and they get excited about it, and you know, that makes you feel good inside. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> yes. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when I'm talking to kids, I use you as an example. Sometimes kids will ask me, how do you keep going? What gives you the determination uh, to know you can be the greatest? And I use you as an example because you weren't in high school the guy they thought would be. Michael Air Jordan, NBA MVP, you know? <laughs> no, uh, you know, for one time, uh, my principal advised me to go to an uh, Air Force Academy because he felt that after I finished college, I have a job. Mm. So I said, no, I don't want to go that route. So I decided to go to the University of North Carolina. A lot of people didn't expect me to do so well, but I guess that was a challenge that I faced. And yeah. sometimes you have to face those challenges and see what happens. Wow. And now you're playing at a level that, that, that I find unbelievable um do you think sometimes that the way you play could shorten your career because you play so hard you're the nucleus of the success in chicago uh and and i don't mean to embarrass you or put you on the spot so you have to diss your partners but um <laughs> but you have to really play hard does that hurt you physically no because when i play i play hard all the time you know mm -hmm. there's no turn it on here turn it off here it's just 110 percent at all times so you know, if I burn out, I burn out. That means my career is short. I go play golf somewhere. Yeah. But <laughs> I just never, uh, in my whole life, I never pace myself. It's all just out, go out, and do your best. And a lot of people worry about me burning out. And uh, I never have the time to worry about it. I just go out and play. So the rumors that you're not going to be in the slam dunk contest this year as a result of your knees and saving yourself is not true? No, it's true to a certain extent. Uh, you know, I found that even during the All-Star Weekend, a lot of other players are on vacations, and, you know, this is a, uh, something to do, which I enjoy doing. The people uh, vote me in to come in and play an All-Star game and do the dunking contest. But after the All-Star Weekend, that wears you down. And I found out the last two times that I had my worst games after the All-Star game because I'm, I'm tired, I, even though I don't know that I'm tired, but I am tired, and I play real terrible, so I decided to to give the, my teammates the benefit of the doubt and, and do something less energizing and uh, you know, really be ready for the second half of the season. Believable in terms of his quickness, his strength, his jumping ability, his touch, and also his knowledge and understanding for the game. He, he by far, uh, you know, is the best I've ever seen. Um, and, and, and Irvin's my boy, mm -hmm. but, you know, air, yeah. <laughs> Something else. Yeah. 
Ah. He real sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dude, you see what he be doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it ain't like we in high school. <laughs> Not only a nice guy, but one of the great ball players in the NBA saying those wonderful things about you. You know, it's, I think there's something you have to be proud about. If you have the respect of your peers, it it's, goes a long way, far greater than any championship that you may win. Mm-hmm. Could I ask you a, another question about your personal play on the court? And you've heard me do jokes constantly since, since I've, you know, <laughs> had the opportunity to do jokes on television. I've always had something in my act about your tongue. <laughs> now, <laughs> where did that come from and why? Well, it's, it's been a lot of speculations initially. <laughs> I mean, but you it... all know what I'm talking about? When Michael comes down court, when he's really getting ready to get seriously busy, you see this. <laughs> what that's all about. And there's some women here wondering what that's all about. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's an unconscious habit that I picked up from my father. Being a little kid and you watch your father work, mm -hmm. you know, he used to stick his tongue out. And, you know, I took it, at, took it up and, and made it a habit of mine. Now I can't stop. I tried to stop. I, I tried playing with the mouthpiece in my mouth. and mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't feel natural. And, and I just, I don't know. And that's something you picked up it's from really your dad? It's really basic. It's nothing outrageous, so don't let your mind go crazy. <laughs> it's basic stuff here now. But your dad did that? Yeah, and my father. You... He still does it. And my little son does it now. He's, a, he's running around with, uh, with his little basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody needs a hook, and the women love yours. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan in a minute. We'll be back. I've had the pleasure of being involved with Magic Johnson for this charity we do every year, uh, National Negro College uh, Fund gets the money. You know, you, you've played in mm -hmm. it. And I noticed something, and I've noticed it when I sit in the forum on the floor, but I noticed it even more when I was able to coach. You all talk a lot. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there were times when you, because I've always been on the other team, you've come past me, and you whisper to me, you say, watch what I do to your boy. <laughs> This is the truth. This is a true story. This is a true story. And of course, this is a fun game to raise money so kids can go to college. But still, just the same, he walked past me, he came past me, he said, watch what I do to your boy. And he whispered to me, and he went down, and he did some way, he just did all kind of stuff. And, and you know, he took his temperature, and, I, and he changed his watch to date and everything, and then he slammed on somebody, and he came back by me and said, <laughs> when you really play a game, are you all talking and intimidating each other? No, sometimes. If you know that individual, I mean, it's a very competitive thing. Nothing to, to try to get a fight started or, or to uh, take him out of his game. I mean, Ron Harper is for one. Ron and I are very good friends, and we compete a lot, and we tend to talk a little bit when we play each other. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we you know, pat each other on the tail and say, good shot, good play, this type of thing. But no derogatory stuff. Yeah. Except for maybe Lambeard, I mean, but everybody can understand that. Now, now what, what do you say to Lambeard that oh, you don't say to Harper? Well, that. okay, what would some other guy who's not sitting on the couch with me tonight say to Lambeard that, that you don't say to Ron Harper? I mean, you don't want me to say those words. Oh, okay, you. maybe okay. not, maybe okay. not. <laughs> but it's in, the, it's in the form of that you didn't appreciate what he just did and you know, meet him outside or do this or do that, yeah. or, you know, <laughs> so, that type of thing. So he's a tough, hard player that you actually, it, it, you get angry at sometimes. Everybody does. I mean, it's, it's a common thing. If anybody, if, if you had 273 professional athletes here, a professional basketball player, and you say, who's the dirtiest player in the NBA? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I say 95% I say like, uh, Lamb Beer mm -hmm. or Larry Bird. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and, and, and what does dirty consist of? Holding, pulling, uh, hard fouls. Lamb Beer is very, very dirty in terms of you know, you can see Lambert. He doesn't jump well. Yeah. He can't block a shot. Yeah. So, <laughs> I know. this is true. I mean, this is not to be knocking him, but yeah. you know, you got, let's say myself on the break and he's on the break, you know, he's not going to block my shot. Right. <laughs> yeah. really, I mean, do you really think he would? No, no. See, that's what I'm saying. No. So, to see him coming at me with full steam ahead, 
I mean, it's only to knock me over, knock, knock me off balance. Can't block my shot. I already said that. I got Air yeah. Jordans on. He's got to do this. <laughs> <laughs> but that's I mean, cute. that's that's the type of thing that he does, and people don't appreciate because yeah. we know he can't block shots. But Larry is good with, you know, he can play you kind of slow, and then all of a sudden he'll grab your pants and then get open, get a layup, get a three-point play, that type of thing. That's smart. Yeah. I mean, that's not really cheap, but that's right. smart. So Larry Bird is a very bright ball player. Yeah, he's bright. Yeah. He overcomes a lot of the things, a lot of the natural ability things that he doesn't have. He yeah. may not be the quickest guy, he may not be able to jump, but he thinks very well. Hmm. Do you have any rituals that you do because um, somebody told me that you, you... Now, I don't know if this is true, but somebody told me you have rituals like you wear your old North Carolina shorts under your Bulls shorts. I wear them all the time. I got them on now. I wear Get them. out of here! <laughs> and what do they do for you, like, in an interview situation? <laughs> it's just a sense of, uh, of home, North Carolina, and the university, uh, what it meant to me, actually. It, it gave me an opportunity to be here, to be mm -hmm. a lot of places. It's, it, it unites me with home and the sake of being in the That's memory. That's great, home. man. I wear them all the time. That's a great concept. Mm. Do you, uh, do you miss Doug Collins, your ex-coach? I do, a little bit. I mean, uh, a lot of people try to make it as though I fired Doug, which was totally uh, ludicrous. I didn't have anything to do with it. But we were establishing a good uh, relationship because Doug was a player in the league, and mm -hmm. he knew a lot of things that I was going through. Yeah. And he could prevent or you know, help me get through those situations. Yeah. So, you know, now I miss that a little bit because Phil, Phil was back earlier. I yeah. mean, he was a little bit, he was back in the, in those wildflower days, you know, the peace and that, that type yeah. of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, he's a good person to be around because he's very relaxed. Yeah. He, he has that attitude that, hey, just go out and play, enjoy yourself and don't put pressure on you. And, you know, Doug was good with helping me through situations because he's been through it. Well, a ball player as great as you are, as valuable as you are, if you say, I want Doug, wouldn't he be there? I mean, couldn't you make them keep him? Yeah, but I can go in there and say, I want $5 million. That don't mean they're going to give it to me. Yeah, yeah, OK. <laughs> Which I do want $5 million, but they haven't gave it to me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a business. You find out this is a business. And uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to do that. I don't think uh, I want anybody to do that to me. So I find myself very hesitant to do so. You just play the game. I just play it. And you know, I don't want to take the fun away from the game. I still like to play the game as I played it when I was a kid. How's married life? I can't complain. I mean, it's, it was a big move for me. I'm very happy I did it. It really put some stability in my life. Yeah. Well, congratulations on everything in your life, man. God has truly blessed you. Michael Air Jordan.